Marketing your small farm products, Unit 9. I guess as we've talked about uh, different topics, um, I think at this point we've probably talked about marketing um, more than we've talked about growing. And I think for the small farm viability class, that is probably a bigger concern. I think you can be trained and learn to grow, but I think the marketing concept is the is the key to your success, and um, so that is why I've focused um, so much time on marketing. But the number one thing that has to happen is you have to be a good grower. You have to have a superior product. Um, if you're you're commanding a premium price, you're getting to know the customer. You have to have that product that is better than what you buy at the store. And my family farm, my father-in-law raises strawberries and, and my mother-in-law is always saying, oh, they're, they're this price at the grocery store. I don't know why you work so hard uh, growing those when you can buy them for a dollar a pound at the grocery store. Well, it's not the same product and that kind of frustrates me when she says that. The product you're buying at the grocery store is not the same product that you're getting in the home-picked strawberry patch. So growing is important and um, you have to have a good product. And then you have to decide where you're going to market the product. And then finally, uh, the product has to fit into your goals and resources. A strawberry patch is a good example. You need a lot of labor in the latter part of May in the first part of June and if you don't have a lot of labor available at that time then that would not be a good choice of a product that you should try to to market but strawberries are something that you can pretty easily make ten or twelve thousand dollars an acre if you want to specialize and go with that route so evaluate 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 and then um, what products am I going to market is kind of like the question of what products am I going to grow. It's kind of the same thing. We can we can grow a hundred different products or we can be very specialized. We can plant perennial crops which has a high upfront cost. Uh, grapes for example, uh, you plant grapes and it'll be five years before you get a full harvest. So it takes a lot of capital outlay at the beginning. But in the end um, you will save money by not needing to plant the crop every year. And then the value added, instead of selling grapes, I'm selling wine. So now um, my product that I'm selling is wine, so I've added value to my grapes. And then looking at climate and soil type. And then where am I located? Am I close to, um, could I have a roadside stand? Am I close to a farmer's market? Am I close to a large population? Some other things you have to think about as well. And so location, location, location is true in real estate and it's true in small farm production as well. What's the economics and culture in the area? Is there a large local food movement? What is the economic income of the population? Are you in a poorer community? Are you in a wealthy community? Are you in a community that accepts the culture of local food? And how many other producers are there? And then is there a niche market opportunity? On, on the farm dinners, I think, are a great tool to use, but there can't be five farms doing on the farm dinner. So you have to look and, and see what your niche marketing. And then the grocery, I think the cooperative grocery store is a great concept, and, and we're going to talk about those a little bit more before we're finished today. I give you a, I gave you a couple examples here of um, cooperative grocery stores, and um, that works where all the producers and the consumers are investors and owners of the store. It gives you a great uh, place to market your product with a large amount, and again, it's kind of filling that that place for the consumer and the producer to come together. 
And so great opportunity. The one Oda Co-op is in Deco Decor, Iowa, and I've been there. And just a great, um, a great concept. And encourage you to check out those websites and to to think: Is this something that would would work in your neighborhood? Um, in Macomb, they're working on raising funds for a cooperative grocery store, but it hasn't happened as of yet. They haven't been able to get enough people to commit the capital to to start the business. And then the Food to Fork restaurant, where you focus on uh, local grown food. And the menu, you can't have the same menu every day if you're going to use local foods because what is available from your local farmer changes constantly. So the chef has to be flexible and be willing to make some changes in his uh, market. You definitely receive a premium price. And I have a couple of links here to restaurants that are using that model to promote local grown food. So it's a win-win situation for the restaurant and the farmer, as well as the consumer of their products, in my opinion. And then we've talked about this as well. Do you want visitors to your farm? Are you willing to allow people to come and take farm tours and and look at your baby goats and and to explore your farm and but some of the questions you have to uh, ask yourself you know is it conducive is it if you're three miles down a gravel road you're not going to get people to come to your farm do you have a lot of parking because if they come to the farm they're going to have a place to to park and your liability insurance you definitely need to talk with your insurance agent and uh, but can you be a site for a destination for people to come to your farm? And the same thing with the you pick operation. And if you're doing a CSA, can they pick it up on the farm? So are you willing to allow people to come to your farm? It's an important question to ask. Some people say yes. Some people say definitely not. And then we've talked about CSAs. And again, I told you it was my favorite model. Uh, subscription for weekly vegetable delivery and the customer pays before the year begins and that gives you the opportunity to use that uh, capital to buy seed and equipment and and supplies that you're going to need for the year. It's a shared risk on a, on a great production year. Uh, the basket's going to be fuller than a year where production's not so good. It also allows the farmers to, to plan so if, if the farmer knows he has 40 CSA customers he's going to need at least uh, 40 heads of broccoli went for about three or four weeks in a row and he's going to need 40 bunches of radishes and and he's going to need 80 pounds of tomatoes per week and and it really allows him to plan i think you can also have some flexibility in how the customer picks up the product are they picking it up on the farm is it delivered to right to their home or is it a centralized location where that's located and then one farmer I know it's a you pick where the customer comes out to the farm and picks their own vegetables for a CSA which I think is a is a great concept as well and then the grocery store we had some luck getting our product into uh, the Hy-Vee grocery store here in town and and they seem receptive to uh, buying our product and some advantages is they buy a large amount but you have to remember that if you're selling to the grocery store, it's going to be a wholesale price because they're going to mark it up uh, for retail. And so we kind of used that as our overflow, what we couldn't sell at the farmer's market or to our campus customers, we would try to take to uh, the grocery store. And then the farmer's market. We participate in two farmer's markets, one on campus, one uptown during the week and you have to evaluate how close to the market is the farm. And Henry's willing to drive to Evanston from his farm near Bloomington to capture a larger customer base and to get a premium price. Well, how far are you willing to go to the market? And then are you willing to spend the day? The, the farmer's market is definitely um, 
kind of a whole day thing by the time you uh, get your produce ready get to the market get set up uh, spend four hours at the market pack up take your stuff home it's kind of a full day and and I always kind of struggle with that as I don't feel as productive as I should and then we talked about in budgeting that you need to estimate how much you need to sell each week and kind of base your decisions on that and something that we work on as a group is, is trying to price our product where it's compatible from each farm stand and that helps um, establish a, the market price at our local farmers market so before you begin some things you need to do research and look at our options possibly you, you need to have a market before the seasons begin this year we established um, a gladiola market um, we we're able to sell our gladiolas for 70 cents each and we knew that going in and so we can have an idea of how many we can grow what our price is going to be and it makes it a lot easier for budgeting try some various markets look at all your options and, and you will quickly determine which market you like best and which one's most successful for your farm grow a wide range of products try to be diversified especially at the beginning the perennials are nice you don't have to replant constantly and I think in the long run perennials are a great option and don't be afraid to tr try something new Try one new product every year and see what happens.